What's up, Wizards? Dev, SPMTG, we like it a magic. Top three decks of the week. Do we do it every week? No, we do it when important weeks roll around. It's a pretty important week. It was the first week of tournaments post bans so we had some pretty big events standard challenge you know, a couple of mtgo leagues but those aren't as highly weighted but we also had the pizza box open which had over a hundred people at it so you know first real big trial since the bans came down and we get to see what's actually good in standard now i will say before we really get into it i just did a video about all the things that we expect to be good in standard and by and large those predictions were right but i'm not going to pat myself on the back too much because a moose could have made those predictions right we knew that ramp was going to be good it is it's everywhere we knew soldiers was going to be good it's performing well particularly on mtgo but today i'm going to highlight some decks that not a whole lot of people have talked about after the band so far at least in terms of content creation, the articles and Reddit posts that I've seen. These are some sort of under-the-radar decks that have done well either in leagues or, in a couple of cases, uh, the last two decks we'll look at today, actually won the two biggest events of the year so far, and they're both decks that we haven't really talked about much. So, we're going to do that, but first, before we get <laughs> to the decks that won the two big events, we're going to look at two decks. Uh, if you're doing the math, that's four decks, but I get an honorable mention. So, we're going to look at two decks from MTGO League results. Now, as we often say, sort of a disclaimer for MTGO League results, uh, any deck that's competently built at least can go 5-0 like any day of the week. Igby is tearing something up back there at the couch. That's how it got in the shape it's in now. But anyway, um, again, any deck can competently, any deck competently built can 5-0 a league. On any good day, you know, it gets the right draws, its opponent gets the wrong draws, or gets mana screwed or whatever. So these aren't often weighted as highly, but it's always cool when like an interesting, different new deck that we haven't seen too much of in a season pops up on MTGO, right? So let's look at a couple of these to start things off, kind of dip our toes a little bit before I have to get to the, the honestly, the more depressing news of what won the two bigger events so far. So... Let's look first at our honorable mention. This is uh, from user Flower Bomb Tim in the MTGO League. They went 5-0 with this blue-white Flyers deck. And this is really cool. You know, I think a lot of us have tried to, um, again, especially content creators, <laughs> have tried to build decks around Aaron and Giada. And there's a few different ways you can do it. You can go, you know, angels. Uh, you can just go quality flyers. You can go with kind of a flash theme if you want to. You can go flash flyers if you want to, spectral adversary and stuff. What Flower Bomb did here is kind of a little bit of everything, you know. You got Giada, Fawn of Hope. You got Sarah Paragon in here. These are angels. Still, Sarah is an angel. Boombringer Valkyrie, that's an angel. Fairy Mastermind, not an angel. So. <laughs> it's like mostly an angel's deck, but you know, fairy mastermind is just a normal flyer that also like satisfies that uh, flash. You know, th the deck kind of wants to play at instant speed for a couple of turns. You know, even though there's no um, counter spells in the main deck, you'll notice. Now, once you get to the sideboard, you'll get those counter spells that you want: your uh, disdainful strokes, your make disappears, your essence scatters, your negates. I mean, there's eight counter spells in the sideboard, so very much a best of three pile, but. For the most part, I like the way this thing is built. You know, 23 creatures is probably just enough to really take advantage of Errant and Giada and actually get some draws off of it, right? But you've also got some just decent instant speed, like removal and stuff, you know, Destroy Evil, Faithful Absence, Wandering Emperor. These are all great instant speed pieces. Destroy Evil is still good, even with Fable out of the format. And then Invasion of Gobicon in here. We tried, if you'll remember, um, I'm actually wearing the stream shirt, my Strictly Squad shirt. Thanks, Cat Lady. Um, but anyway, if you remember on stream not long ago, we played a blue white flyers with invasion of Goba contact and my build was lame compared to this. You know, I played like the one blue mana ninja guy. <laughs> my, my build was not quite this at all, but just, um, little flyers with invasion of Goba was actually really good. Um, we won a bunch of games that night and I feel like this one is a lot more focused. <laughs> it's doing a lot cooler stuff. Altogether, I think Steel Seraph is a great card right now. Um, people aren't entirely cutting a braid, but there's just less red in the format. You don't run up against Rakdos hardly as often, so you just don't see a braid as much. And Steel Seraph is just really, really good right now, and that's not the only reason. It's just a fantastic magic card. It really is. Um, 
go for the throat is maybe the most prevalent removal spell in the format at the moment. So again, still Seraph. Just keep your eye out for it. It's really, really good card if you haven't played it lately. Just a good card. But anyway, this deck just looked cool to me. I don't want to spend too long on it. I basically said all you need to say about it. Um, so there's not much to say about it. I'm just kind of tempo-y, some decent removal here and there. Stick a flyer or two and just... Get in for damage, you know, let your opponent slip a creature or two through the cracks so long as they're not too big or impactful. And you can just race them to the finish in terms of combat damage and then keep their big stuff off the board, gain some life with Wandering Emperor, I win the game. So, you know, keep your guys from getting swept with an invasion or whatever. So there's a lot of really cool stuff <laughs> going on with this deck. And I'm not sure that it's like the best deck in the format, but... This time, I don't think that you can chalk it up to a fluke. I think this deck 5 would for a reason. I think it's got, you know, a lot of cool angles that most people aren't really planning for right now. And that sometimes makes for a really good deck. We'll move on to a deck that you need to know exists. This is our for real number three deck of the day. This is also from Standard League. Uh, this is from user Smoking Mirrors. But this isn't the only version of this deck that we could look at. This is blue-black mid-range. Um, you could call it blue-black control, but it's got a whole bunch of creatures that it plays at sorcery speed, so it's really more of a mid-range deck than anything. Um, and it's really neat. And you see different versions of it, but the important thing is that you see it at all. You know, this deck has been on MTGO um, in different leagues, right? It's been uh, present in MTGO challenges so far. It was in... Um, I think a 38 person tournament that you can um, access on MTG Melee right now. It's not the pizza box open, but it's the second biggest tournament of the year so far that isn't an MTGO challenge or, or pizza box. So um, this deck has been around. You got Graveyard Trespasser, you know, 21 creature suite here, which I think is just enough. <laughs> <laughs> Call the deck not control, you know. Um, Graveyard Trespasser in here. I really like this right now. I'm not going to say it's Fable of the Mirror Breaker, right? But one of the cool things about Fable is that it took so many different cards to deal with it. And this takes at least two cards to deal with it. It produces value the turn it comes into play. It's really good. It snowballs if left unchecked. So I think Graveyard Trespasser gets not Fable of the Mirror Breaker, but it's annoying in some ways that are reminiscent, you know, but Ledger Shredder, um, I'm playing four Ledger Shredder in Blue Black right now. I'm actually playing four Ledger Shredder in like five different decks <laughs> at the moment that I'm trying out. I really like this card. Again, um, if the goal is to find cards that produce as much value as Fable of the Mirror Breaker in Standard right now, um, I think Ledger Shredder is a really good candidate. Uh, again, Snowballs, after a while, produces mega value, lets you filter into your graveyard if you want to, see more of your deck, whatever. So, Really, really like Ledger Shredder right now. I've seen a bunch of people trying it out, and I can see why. <laughs> you know, Tenacious Underdog is back. There's multiple reasons for this. I'm glad it's back. Again, value is value, basically. All three of the creatures we've looked at so far are either able to create value or uh, more likely... Um, really just pains in the butt to deal with. You know, Graveyard Trespasser takes two cards to deal with. Tenacious Underdog might take multiple removal spells, and if you use a removal spell on it, it feels like a waste. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, and if you do waste removal spells in these early creatures, and you feel like you have to, this is kind of the secret with Fable too, by the way. Um, you're wasting removal spells on the 2-2 Goblin, the Reflection, and all that, and you don't have removal for the Shieldred. So, Shouldred just comes down. There's four copies in the deck. <laughs> Shouldred just comes down and does work. And you have, like, no cards left in your hand. You're trying to draw cards to deal with her, but that deals more damage to you. Phyrexian Flesh Gorger is in this deck. <laughs> in case, um, A, you ever get to seven mana. Or, B, you're able to get it out of your graveyard somehow. Um, and there's a third option we'll look at in just a second. There's a third thing it does in this deck. And, again, note that it's got some sort of ward cost. You, know, you have to, an extra cost to deal with it. And even though this time it doesn't cost resources, technically your life total is a resource. So, yeah, it's good stuff. And then hit at Sugu and Kairi. So this, um, you, you can't cast the Phyrexian Flesh Gorger with the hit at Sugu and Kairi if the H and K dies. But know that it will do like seven damage to the opponent. Just a really good card that was waiting to see some real play outside of like Mimi combo decks with Explosive Singularity. And it's finally here. Seen it in a bunch of lists over the last week and a half here. Make Disappear is in the deck. The only counter spell uh, in the main deck, but 
that's fine. Again, there's <laughs> plenty of counter spells on the sideboard down there, but Make Disappear is really, really good right now. If you haven't noticed, you play against it a lot. <laughs> um, and then Cut Down and Go for the Throw, which are still just pff, the best removal spells imaginable. Cut Down, bit of a mistake, but <laughs> you know, while, <laughs> while it's in standard, we should probably play it. It's fantastic. 26 lands in the deck. It's kind of a bit, but you know, you need to hit these drops. Uh, Soul Transfer is in here. Interesting call. Really interesting call, but there's a ton of creatures in the deck that you'd really like to get back from your graveyard. And then Invasion of Amon Ket is in here, a spicy little include. Again, just enough creatures to like make this work, <laughs> you know, both in terms of being able to actually attack into the battle and then take advantage of the other mode on it. You know, it's, it's Scarab God's things. It makes a 4 4 out of your graveyard, like a copy of a creature from your graveyard, except it's a 4 4. Uh, and that's pretty decent, <laughs> so especially in a deck with like Flesh Gorgers, Hitsugu, Shieldreds and stuff. So, whew, just a pretty slick looking deck. And again, down here in the sideboard, you got the stuff you'd expect. Duress, a small sweeper against Soldiers and Mono Red with Glistening Deluge. Um, Siphon Inside against mostly control decks. Uh, spell Pierce, Disdainful Stroke, more counter spells, and then uh, another cut down against those aggro decks. So. Just a solid build. Altogether, I really like this deck. I've been talking about it for too long, but there's just numerous versions of it out there, and if you haven't run across it yet, you probably will because it's just kind of out here. And <laughs> eventually, awareness will spring forth, especially if I keep doing videos like this. But Let's move on to uh, one of the decks that actually won one of the bigger events. Uh, we'll look at the standard challenge deck. Uh, and then we'll look at a, uh, a melee deck, a deck that's on MTG Melee, so it'll have a dark screen, and that'll be very nice. <laughs> but while we're while we're here, let's look at this deck. Um, this was let me make sure I get the user right, Oscar Franco. Now it says seventh place, but MTGO challenges are still doing this thing they were doing last season, where if you look at like the standings, it'll say first place, some some person that plays Magic. But that will be wrong. Uh, if you actually look at the brackets, <laughs> then you can tell who came in first and was in the final and all that. And in this case, uh, Oscar Franco <laughs> won the entire standard challenge with blue-white control, everybody. We all kind of worried that this deck would be good. Some people were really stoked that this deck would be good, <laughs> you know, but can't say I was necessarily one of them. And honestly, I say this deck is blue-white control. But it's only got one main deck counter spell, and that's Make Disappear. It's a playset of Make Disappears, but could be worse. Three memory deluge. That's how you draw cards, baby. And then Ambitious Farmhand. <laughs> it blocks, it gets us our drops, and whatever. Um, and then the Planeswalkers are the real meat of the win conditions here. There's eight of them in the deck, so it's very close to a Super Friends deck. Three Wandering Emperor, best Planeswalker in standard. Three whole copies of Five Minutes of Fairy in here. No, no, Phyrexian Jace. Um, whether that's surprising or not, I'll leave it up to you. But no Phyrexian Jace. But three Five Minutes of Fairy. This dude is really, really good. <laughs> He's a fantastic planeswalker. This is what you get to do when you was no invoke despair. We've talked about you know Fable of the Mirror Breaker a million times this, this video already but this is what you get to do when you don't have invoke despair you get to play Teferi and he's fantastic in any case this feels like playing classic control right <laughs> you got your um mana leak in make disappear you got swords to plowshare with lay down arms you got your wrath of god with sunfall you got your you know draw to <laughs> memory deluge whichever one your brain geyser I don't know, whatever old school <laughs> card you like your land tax ambitious farmhand this card better than land tax no it's not <laughs> it ain't <laughs> not even close you know but yeah this just feels like classic blue white i like the sideboard chrome horror chrome host uh seed chart too by the way and the sideboard hole breaker horror for what that's where it's a break control mirrors and stuff let's go so <laughs> just overall I, I've, I've said before I'm a reformed uh, control mage and that I hate control and stuff now. But sometimes there's something almost wistful about seeing a blue-white control deck perform. I don't want it to be the norm, but I like to see it perform bars. But let me let the chicken out and then we'll move on to our final deck of the day. If you're eagle-eyed, you might be able to actually read what that tab says up there. But hold on, I'll be right back. Final deck of the day. Hate to do it to you, but <laughs> just 
got to. This is the deck that won the pizza box open. The esteemed shout out to the pizza box. Let's look at Jess Guy Control by Simone Arboleda Escobar. I butchered that and I apologize, but good job. Good job, Simone. Because uh, this deck actually looks really, really good. It's different than the one we just looked at. You might think that it's going to be the same exact deck, but no, it's actually, it only shares a couple of cards. Um, surprisingly, you know, it's got Make Disappear in here, which is a card, you know. Yeah, come on, we all, it's, it's going to be in here. It's every single deck that we've looked at has Make Disappear in it somewhere. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, yeah, whether in the sideboard or the main deck, it's like the most played card of the last week. Because it turns out Mana League is a really good card, <laughs> you know. turns out Lightning Bolt's a good card, too. So Strangle is a four of in this deck, which may be one of the secrets to the sauce here of, of their success in this tournament. Because I'm sure a lot of people were playing, like, Soldiers and Mono Red and stuff like that. Especially the first week of the season. So four Strangle is a wise choice <laughs> in the main deck. But you've also got a Brotherhood's in. However... No uh, Sunfall or Depopulate or Burn Down the House. No other Sweepers. Just Brotherhood's End and uh, Four Strangle for the little the little guys. Because you don't have to worry too much about the big guys. You've got the Wandering Emperor to take out, you know, just about any size creature that you might have to worry about. Um, and this deck does have Wedding Announcement, even though it has fewer Planeswalkers, which I thought was interesting wrinkle. Um, but this one plays the Chrome Host Seed Shark in the main deck rather than the sideboard, which I love. I think this card's great. By the way, um, it also plays two at Sushi, the Blazing Sky, and an AO, the Dawn Sky, Scott Hall. AO. <laughs> I love I love seeing this dude in the main deck. Love it. But Zergo no Jutai is a four of. That's right. It's a five mana legend that we're playing a four of <laughs> in the deck, which is kind of amazing to me. But here we are. The deck is kind of centered around this card. And for good reason. It's a really, really good magic card. As far as um, finishers go, so long as you get your opponent into a situation where you're not going to die in like one or two turns. <laughs> you know, if you've actually been able to control the game in such a way that you haven't taken all the damage in the world and your opponent's board state isn't like massive or anything the, you know, you, you're holding down the ground with wedding announcement. Perhaps you've been able to strangle a guy and make disappear this big spell or whatever, you know, Chrome host seed shark, fill the ground with a guy or two here and there. Zergo no Jutai can come down and just be the thing that's like clocking your opponent, literally and figuratively. I mean, it's clocking them by hitting them in the face, but it's also putting a clock on them of just a few turns. You know, if you actually can start controlling them out of the game, turning the tide and attacking with some of those wedding announcement tokens, some of those um, incubator tokens or the Chrome Host itself, right? If you just attack with Zergo and Chrome Hosts just by themselves, you know, that's six damage. If you go Zergo and Atsushi, you know, curve but reversed if you go like to, you know turn three seed shark uh you're, you won't be getting much value off of it in this case so we'll just go turn four at sushi um turn five zerga and that's wonderful you know <laughs> you're swinging for eight a turn at that point and getting card advantage just a fantastic looking deck um it's almost a mid-range deck it really is um again i should point out that there are more counter spells on the sideboard almost the same ones you know you got two negate Two Disdainful Stroke. <laughs> there are Sunfalls in the board. Uh, there's also an Invasion of Gobicon. Just single Invasion of, invasion of Gobicon. That sh card's showing up a lot. Two more Brotherhood's in. You really want to deal with Soldiers. And Brotherhood's in usually gets the job done. Especially in the early turns. But a couple of interesting things here. Deadly Respost. Uh, this is basically the um, almost the Wandering Emperor's ability. The, the Weenie Emperor's ability. It just like bolts the creature. Uh, but you gain the two life. And I think that's really, really good against, again, soldiers and mono red and stuff. This is probably better than it looks, but you don't see it every day. And then Lithomantic Barrage. Uh, we've been seeing this card more and more in sideboards, and it makes a lot of sense, right? This will blow up Wandering Emperors and the six mana Emperor, for that matter, um, to fairies. But it also blows up just about everything in soldiers, including... Um, Thalia, for a really, really low cost, just one mana, it's going to blow up tons of different creatures and planeswalkers in the format. So I really like Barrage right now. I've seen it in the main deck in best of one a couple of times of other people's decks, and it kind of blows you out, so <laughs> it's not bad. There's an Invasion of New Phyrexia. Uh, you see this every now and again in the Jeskai and Blue-White control decks. It's the one that flips over into the new Teferi, and um, I've only seen this once. 
in the wild. Uh, it did flip over into New Teferi, and it is very annoying to deal with because it basically deals or draws two cards a turn. They never used the Night Anthem thing against me. They just kept drawing cards, and it's really difficult to deal with. <laughs> but anyway, Invasion of Tarkir is awesome, and here's a four of... Uh, because there's, you know, seven dragons. So you might as well. Um, this can deal a fair amount of damage to the opponent. But also, uh, when I say to the opponent, that's what I meant to say, is it can deal damage to the dome, which is kind of interesting, um, especially if they don't see it coming, you know, like, oh, I can take one more hit from Zergo and Ojutai and go to, like, two or three. Uh, never mind, no, I can't. I'm just going to get bolted by <laughs> this invasion of Tarkir and die. I really like decks like this that can just do multiple things. I think it's really important especially in this format right now, to be able to attack from different angles and sort of be a chameleon, you know, depending on what sort of matchup you're in. Because there's a lot of aggro, but there's a lot of control too. Things aren't quite as mid-range as they once were like a week and a half ago. And in a format like that, you really need to be able to shift, you know, really, you know, be able to uh, maintain, place your weight correctly <laughs> is all I'm saying. So I like this deck. I feel like it's got an awful lot going for it right now, but... Those are the decks of the week, ladies and gentlemen. We've been talking for quite some time. I always expect these videos to be 15 minutes, and they're always twice that long. <laughs> I hope that you uh, enjoyed it. I know it's a couple of control decks, but we saw a sweet blue-white Flyers deck. There's a blue-black mid-range deck, and yeah. yeah they, all, they all have, like, counter spells in them. Some of us hate it. Some of us out there hate it, <laughs> you know. But altogether, this isn't, you know, I was worried Mono Blue would be an amazing deck. I was worried blue-white control with actual a million counter spells and not just a bunch in the sideboard and stuff um, would be an amazing deck. And control is good. Control is good. But we're not seeing the deck that has like four make disappear and four essence scatter or whatever and four urtai scorn or dissipate. You know, we're not seeing these like 12 counter spell decks. Um, we're seeing four counter spells in the main and then, you know, I'm going to remove your guy, play my planeswalker, just play a game of magic rather than just like annoy the crap out of you. You know what I mean? So at least they're like, they're honest control decks. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. You know, last thing I want to say here, cause I know I'm running long here is that often the fastest deck wins in an unestablished format. The first like two weeks fastest deck is great. But again, this format was very much established. And oftentimes it takes control a few weeks to figure out what exactly it needs to be using its slots for, what it needs to be, you know, what cards it needs to play to properly address the threats in the format. But this this uh, this format was not only fairly well established, but even after the bans, it was fairly easy to predict what decks would be good. So control kind of had a head start from where it normally is at the beginning of new formats. And maybe you could chalk that up to how well it's doing right now. But I do think this format is, is very value driven, even without Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Invoke Despair, Reckon or Bang Buster, um, even without all those cards in the format. I think there's still a lot of value to be had. You know, there's a lot of cards that do like 12 things that aren't named Fable of the Mirror Breaker. A lot of sagas and stuff that I really like. I've been trying out lately and doing cool stuff with. And um, sagas aren't the only thing, obviously. There's a ton of different cards in this format that produce more value than I think control can like reasonably keep up with. And I think if control does take more of a foothold in the format, there's multiple cards that are really good against control that are kind of baked in to be fantastic in this format. Things like Tyranax Rex and whatnot. So, you know, I think that the format can remain healthy. I wouldn't say the sky is falling if you're a sort of control hater and you don't want a format where all you do is line up against control all day you know some of us don't have time for that it's a brave new world out there just you know let us know how you felt about all these and what you've been playing and having fun with and all that and i gotta let ziggy out because he's very insistent but first we have to do the couch card of the day i'm sorry ziggy i promise i love you so much you're gonna be out of here in like one minute let me do the couch card uh, let me pull something fun here i don't want to look can't look can't look at the thing. Shake that down to one card. I got like seven cards in my hand. What are you? Ooh, it's an Abzan charm, everybody. Abzan charm. You can't tell because it's like flipped on the webcam, but it's three mana. Abzan colors. Black, white, green. For an instant, choose one. Exile target creature with power three or greater. Or you draw two cards and you lose two life. 
or you distribute two plus one plus one counters among one or two target creatures. That's the green part of it. This card was great, man. This card was really, really good. You know, it's removal, it's card draw at instant speed, by the way. Instant speed divination in a color combination that doesn't usually get that. It's really, really good. And then um, the counters were decent as like a combat trick sometimes just to blow people out when they didn't do their math right. So, man, that was a. Remember with like Den Protector and Siege Rhino and Wingmate Rock? You guys remember Wingmate Rock? Um, just remember to do all the YouTube stuff on your way out. Check out the Patreon if you want to support the channel. Link in the description for that. Deck lists and stuff in the description, probably. Um, <laughs> links at the very least to all these websites I went to MTG Melee, the MTGO standings, and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, you can check me out on twitch.tv slash spmtgdev if you want to catch me live. But I'm going to stop with the self-promotion. You're done with this video. I'm done with this video. I'll catch you cats later. <laughs> Dev from the place. Thanks for watching, wizards. Spread love and be kind.